Grains plus veggies plus protein plus sauce equal endless possibilities. Life can be a struggle, but a good meal doesn't have to be. We can make creative, nutritious, and inventive dishes for under $2 a plate. In many ways, today's episode is all about choosing your own adventure. However, the base of every dish is filled with grains, which for just pennies give you filling ingredients. And on top of them, all we need to do is add vegetables and a sauce, maybe some fiber. Things will be delicious. We are starting off with quinoa. It is spelled in a very funny manner, but that is how you pronounce it. Say it with me, quinoa, quinoa, quinoa. Quinoa is cool because it's got a really high protein to weight ratio among the highest of all the grains. So if you're looking to build some mousse clés, this is a great way to do it. Remember, you can buy it in bulk and only take what you think you're gonna use. That would mean less upfront investment to try this dish. So let's get started. Here's how we add flavor for free with quinoa. Straight into a pan, and we're gonna give it a toast just for a minute or so while we move it. This is gonna bring out nuttiness, and it's gonna add flavor without having to do anything ingredient-wise. Starting to aroma eyes, and now we're gonna add water. A Little bit of salt, top goes on, heat goes down. What's really cool is all grains cook in the same manner. They are boiled in water. The only thing that changes is the cooking time and the water to grain ratio. You can use your internets to figure out the best one for each grain. To add even more protein to our already high protein dish, we're gonna use some canned tuna. It's a very cost effective protein. To it, we will add some packaged mayonnaise. And we're gonna add some avocado. We are very fortunate today in that we can afford avocado because of all the other affordable ingredients in here. A Little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Guys, don't go too hard. I am not looking for a homogenous baby food mixture. I want chunks so that we can get some texture out of all these wonderful ingredients here. Like here, that's when you gotta stop. Now it's time to make our dressing. New bowl. Grains are flavor absorbers. And if you don't give them anything to absorb, there's not gonna be any flavor. That is why you must make the dressing. Two soy sauce, three packets of mayo. To this, we're gonna add a little bit of rice wine vinegar. This is one of those ingredients that cuts through the fat. It's super important that you have something acidic in your dressing. It really is. It adds just another dimension. So, rice wine vinegar, about a quarter cup of canola oil, and finally, some miso paste. I've had miso in my fridge for six months at a time. It's amazing. It's already a fermented thing, so it can't ferment anymore. Miso. You've had miso before, right? It's like a savory, salty, umami flavor. It's delicious. Beautiful. Look at that gorgeous, nice, thick sauce. Time to make our salad. Stuff in the bowl. Remember guys, cutting your own vegetables saves money and it prevents you from getting those weird, scraggly, dried up bits in the pre-cut vegetable section. Here comes our dressing. I'm gonna use about three quarters of the dressing and mix. It is time to assemble the bowl. Here comes our grain. How much do you wanna give your friend? That is the question you should be asking yourself right now. Half of our salad goes on the other side. Fill in the gaps. One half of one half of an avocado. Look at that, wise guy. The quinoa is a flavor sponge, so put that last little bit of dressing right on the top there. It's really nice, it's really clean. This dressing almost makes it taste like candy. It's wonderful. And the quinoa is super high in protein, so it's really wise thing to consume. Some even call it a wise grain because it's been around for so many generations. You know what else is really smart? The fact that this is $1.99 and it's good hot or cold. And then when you eat it with the shredded cabbage, that miso gives you the umami flavor. It makes it taste even better. This is a wonderful grain bowl, and all we had to do was follow the simple guidelines. Grain, vegetable, sauce, protein. Let me show you how to put that formula into action again. Oh. Faro. It has a really chewy, dense texture, and it is wise, as always. A cup of farro. Let's get a little butter in there and a little bit of salt. This time, instead of toasting the farro, I'm using fat for flavor. Bring it up to a boil. Boom, simmer. Now for my next trick, roasted garlic. If you've never done it before, it takes all the zing and spiciness out of raw garlic and turns it into a sweet, unctuous flavor bomb that is gooey, spreadable, and mixable into anything. It's so easy. Watch. 
Tin foil, garlic, bring up the sides, just a tiny bit of olive oil. Like, like a really small amount, a couple drops. And some salt, boom. 425 degrees until tender. Check it at 25 minutes. It might take up to 45. It's worth it. We have some cucumber. And using our peeler, we are gonna make ribbons. This gives you a lot of bang for the buck because it gives the illusion of quantity. You know, you just can't go Greek without the cucumber. All right, check it out. Here is our roasted garlic. It's amazing what happens to it. You just squeeze the whole thing and little nuggets will start coming out. Boom, boom, boom. Here comes some yogurt. Just a touch of balsamic vinegar. It gives you some color and it gives you a nice depth. Bing, bing, bing. Olive oil. Just give it a stir. Here we have a delicious sauce, which is fundamental to our grain bowl, as always. And using garlic, which is already cheap, we got even more flavor by roasting it. So we've got cooled farro. Fresh cherry tomatoes in there. A little bit of arugula. It's a wonderful, bitter herb. You can use whatever green you like here. Got some roasted chicken from last night. Shred it up. And finally, some cucumber ribbons. Beautiful. Now, how do we make it even better? We put the sauce on top. You gotta put the sauce on top. That is how you complete the entire picture. All right, roasted garlic. Here we go. Here is our farro bowl. It's bright, it's delicious, it's fresh, and it's only $1.99. Why wouldn't you put this into your body? It's like the ultimate fuel for the day. Roasted garlic and chicken. Mmm! It is no wonder that this Greek farro bowl delivers the whole package because I followed the prescription, which is, of course, grains, vegetables, proteins, and a sauce. The restaurant industry doesn't want you to know that because that's how they make a profit. Let me show you the third bowl. It's probably the most famous in the grain world. Now it is time for the illustrious green goddess bowl. Barley, something that is H cubed F. Healthy, hearty, and high in fiber. Let's get this ancient grain in the pan. Water, fire. About a cup and a half. Gonna come in with some butter. Gonna get our vegetables ready in a sheet tray. This is super simple. Keep everything segregated. Onion, sweet potato, some Brussels sprouts, and chickpeas. Remember, chickpeas are one of the most affordable proteins. Olive oil, garlic powder. All over, baby. Our thing's boiling. Bring it down to a nice light simmer and cover. We're back here. Cumin! And of course, salt. Do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little mix, a little mix. This is one of the easiest ways to cook vegetables. The main thing to remember is to try to cut everything to a size where everything will be finished at about the same time. And roasting on a sheet tray means that we have minimal cleanup and we pull a lot of natural sugars out of the vegetables so they taste way better. 425 for about a half hour. The Green Goddess Bowl has a gremolata. Think of it as a roughly chopped pesto. Scallions, parsley, mint, garlic. Just start roughly getting everything all around. And if you're thinking to yourself, hey, I hate buying fresh herbs, and a recipe calls for a certain amount, and I don't know what to do with the rest of it, you know what you should do? Use all the fresh herbs in this gremolata. It's okay. All right, so bring your garlic, your scallion, your mint, your parsley, bring it all together. You're gonna get a little friction in the form of salt, and we're just gonna start doing this. No big deal. You cannot do this with dried herbs. It's just not gonna cut it. All right, herbs into the bowl. Here comes extra virgin olive oil. How about some yogurt? Some lemon zest, and the rest of the lemon. Very nice. A little bit of salt. And now the gremolata gets a mixaiola. Guys, you could put this on so many things. It's such a delicious way to add color and freshness to pretty much anything. Time to assemble. Find a bowl. We got enough barley here for four people. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get our vegetables. Gorgeous. Look at that. Here it comes. You can keep it whole. You can cut it if your heart desires. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little. Oh, look at how soft and gorgeous that is. Here comes some caramelized onion, some sweet potato, Brussels sprouts, very tasty. Chickpea, some green goddess sauce. Grain bowl revolution is in full force, but not before we add some pumpkin seeds on top to make it extra bougie and protein packed. That's right, pumpkin seeds have protein. That formula once again is grains, protein, vegetable, and sauce. 
crunchy chickpea. You get a little oops, sprouted brussel. Mmm, mmm, bright and fantastic. There's just a smorgasbord of flavors here. And that is my third and final act, the Green Goddess Bowl. Something that normally costs $20 is yours for $1.96, and just one payment of it also. It's so wise if you make these at home, just like the grains that we use today. And it's really simple. All you have to do is follow the formula. Grain, protein, vegetable, and sauce. The possibilities are endless. Your wallet will thank you, and so will your belly, because this stuff is healthy. Thanks for watching. Go forth and be wise, my strugglers.